The next train piece is going to come from the Doctor 12 episode, The Magician's Apprentice. In the beginning of that, you see a little bit of Scarrow and you get introduced to hand minefields. So we're going to make one of those. Here is a piece of hardboard that I've beveled down just like the other pieces. And then I had to go through my collection to try and find a bunch of hands. And I settled on these. They are plastic hands from the Games Workshop zombie set. And the nice thing about those is a bunch of the hands are opened up like this, which is what you want. And you get a bunch of them. You get ones on the standards and you get extra hands, including this lovely severed arm. So just gather up as many of those as you can spare. And then once you've got those snipped off and cleaned off, what I'm gonna do, for example, this one right here, I'm going to cut off the part of the arm that I'm not gonna use. You wanna cut below anything like sleeves, bracelets, wraps, anything like that. You just want the hand like that. And then what I'm going to do so I'm going to take the Dremel, let's see, there that is, with the little grinder tip that you can see there, one shaped like a ball. And I'm going to fire that up and I'm just going to create a little divot, a little depression in the middle of the palm. Just, you don't obviously want to go through the whole hand. You want to use the smallest bit you can. You just give yourself a little depression to help make that weird, creepy eyeball in the middle of a thing. And you know, that actually looks pretty good just like that. You could stop there, but of course we're not going to. We've mixed up a small amount of green stuff. I'm just going to take a tiny bit of it and press it into that depression that we made. So with the green stuff in that hole that you drilled, the next step is to just push it into a rough eye football almond shape and then go in with your sculpting tool just trace a little line inside there to further define that eye. So you'll basically get a ridge around it for the kind of eyelid material and then the eyeball inside. And then you can go and just smooth out edges a little bit like that oh, let's see there then once you've made a whole bunch of these little eye hands just go and take your super glue and attach them to the base like that something like that there. Doesn't that look creepy? Once the glue is dry, we're going to take out our spackle and we're going to do two things with it. We're going to build up an edge along the side of the base so that it looks like this swampy area is actually recessed into the gaming surface. I mean, it's just it's just how terrain is made. You build up the edge around water surfaces. So that's one thing that we're going to do. The other thing is we're going to take a very bad brush. I have lots to choose from. And we're just going to take some and we're going to just stipple it around the center to make an uneven texture in the middle. And if we get some on our hands, that's fine because they are coated with mud and stuff as well. And I'm probably going to let this dry again and go in with another stipple just to make sure it is as rough and uneven as possible. When you put it on when it's wet, it tends to be kind of smooth. 
Once all that is dry, we're going to go back to our regular white glue and we're just going to take our old brush and we're going to run some of this white glue along the embankment and we're going to sprinkle some just regular sand on there because again I want this to go with my quarry table so the edge of this swamp is still going to be very rocky. So I'm going to spread this around all through there. Take just some regular sand. <clears throat> put this like that. Put that on there. What I may do as well is once this is dry, or you know, once I've got that on, I'll just spread a little thin glue on the surface and just pinch a little bit of the finest bits of sand and sprinkle it on the center section just to give a little extra texture in there. With this all modeled up, I'm going to hit it with the good GW Cast Black Undercoat because I don't want to use bad spray paint and get my nice sculpted details clogged up. Back at the painting station, ready to do the base colors. Everything in the middle, including the hands and eyes and all that stuff, is going to get painted a mix of burnt umber and black. And everything along the edge here that are going to be the rocks are going to get painted that dark gray charcoal color. So just kind of like that. Once that's dry, we add a whole bunch of water to some black paint and we cover the whole thing, brown and gray, with a black wash. Next, the hands and mud are going to get a dry brush of burnt umber. Next, a dry brush of brown iron oxide. And try something a little bit different. I've mixed in a little rain gray into the brown iron oxide and I'm going to do a quick dry brush of that. And I'm pretty happy with how that worked out so I'm going to do it again. So I've taken brown iron oxide and added a little bit more rain gray to the mix. I'm going to do another highlight of that. And one final dusting with a little bit more rain gray mixed into the brown mixture. Now we're going to work on the eyes. I'm going to start by painting each of them a medium rain gray. A highlight of drizzle gray. And then pure white. Then in each eyeball, we're going to put a spot of spice brown. It doesn't necessarily have to be right in the center. We can have them looking different ways. And then inside each of those dots, we put a little spot of black for the pupil. Then I painted the rocks like I did all the rocks for this train project, except that instead of using a burnt umber wash on just a few select spots, I'm going to be a lot more generous and I'm going to run it pretty much through the whole uh, gray area, the whole rock area, especially close to the mud puddle in the center. Then hit it with the spray on matte varnish of your choice. So with all of that painted and varnished, the last thing that we're going to do on this terrain piece is just go in with a little water effects or high gloss varnish. And we're just going to spread a little over the surface of the mud puddle. We can put a little onto the wrist of our hands and it can fade up onto the shore. We just want to add some shine to give it a little extra realism. For my next train project, I'm going to make some stone ruined walls that you saw again from Genesis of the Daleks. A cynical person might think that these guys were actually just following along other productions and stealing their sets, like a World War II set or a medieval set. But that's what a cynical person would think. We are going to make these stone walls and we're going to use this really cheap dollar store foam board. 
So what I've done first is I've just outlined two chunks, one about three by three, one about five by three. These are just offcuts. And I'm just going to peel off the paper backing. And that's why I like using the really cheap stuff because if you buy more expensive things, this paper is stuck on better with glue. So anyway, cut those out, peel off the paper. So now that I've got my pieces of foam board, I'm going to carve in a little brick pattern. I'm gonna carve brick pattern in the whole thing because I'm gonna use the scraps too, so it doesn't really matter if we have some that's not gonna be used for the main walls. So I've made little notches at uh, about an eighth of an inch, and I'm gonna draw a bunch of lines this way, and then I'm gonna make notches going at about a quarter of an inch the other way, and then I'll have to alternate the brick pattern going up. So for right now, just take a pencil on the foam board, and just start carving in lines like that. So here I've drawn in all the little lines. I've made marks at an eighth of an inch. And then I'm going to go in and do, take my right angle, and then do alternating lines going up on every other row. And then when I've done that row, I go on to the next eighth inch mark and I do lines going up on the other row. And ta-da, brickwork. So here we have my brick texture all laid out. That was time consuming, but what can you do? Now I went and drew a little pattern on either side. And so I'm gonna assemble it a bit like this, sort of representing a little room that you saw in the episode. So I'm gonna cut those out glue them together, then I'm going to take a piece of hardboard, cut it out like all my regular bases, attach that to that, and I'll rejoin you when that's all set up. Just a couple of notes on this before we go too far. You may need to clean up the other side if your bricks don't line up exactly right. Just trim some areas here and there. That may also include drawing in some brick lines to spots that you cut off straight. And I just planning on skipping this step, but at the last minute I thought maybe I'll do it. I'm just gonna take a, a little rock with some, some nice texture to it. I'm just gonna press it in. Just add a little rough texture to the foam before we paint it. Just give it a little more worn pattern. And of course, when you cut out all this stuff, Save your offcuts, save all that nice work, because we're gonna use it as rubble later on. Anyway, once you're done with that, we're ready to glue. With our base cut, edges beveled, and walls glued down on it using white glue, because sometimes super glue will dissolve the foam, it's time to, of course, take some spackle and put that on the base. As always, we're gonna make an uneven surface. We're just gonna make some more interesting texture on the flat base here. But I'm also gonna pile up some lumps of this stuff along the walls because we're gonna start making some rubble piles. And I don't wanna, you know, make rubble piles out of just offcuts of foam, that'll take forever. So I'm gonna build up the main body of it with the spackle, and then we'll stick the rubble on top. So I'm just gonna spread this around, and we'll check in after all that is formed and dried. You know what, actually I've changed my mind. Instead of letting this spackle dry, I've taken some of these off cuts, you know, the pieces that were left over from the sections that we carved out of our wall, and I'm just gonna start sticking them into the wet spackle to get a jump on forming those rubble piles right now. Now I just finished the basing with my usual combination of coarse sand and finer sand. And then I'm just gonna paint it gray like I've painted everything else. Um, I'm probably only going to do the brown wash on the base, not the walls, but that will be it. So here's everything all painted up and ready to go. Again, I didn't go over how I painted the gray stone because I've done it so many times in these videos. But just real quickly, it's a base coat of charcoal gray, uh, black wash, then a mix of charcoal gray and rain gray, charcoal gray and more rain gray, rain gray, rain gray plus drizzle gray, 
drizzle gray, and then drizzle gray. So it's just a series of dry brushes with lighter and lighter grays. I use Delta Ceram Coat paints. You can use whatever you got. And then just some spot burnt umber wash areas, especially around the base. So yeah, those are the terrain pieces there. Leave a comment below if you have any questions, observations, or concerns, and I will see you on the next one.